Thank you again so very much for coming to church this evening. I'm so very happy to see so many of you here. Thank you for making the effort to be here. Uh, and now that you're here, it is my great joy and responsibility to give you some good news that I know you can use in your own lives. It's always the good news that we are after. When I was a pastor in the Northern California coastal town of Crescent City, which is on the border of Oregon, I met a single mother who had a little girl, seven years old, Sophia. And I was teaching the children their First Communion Catechism lessons, and I told their First Communion class, of which Sophia was part of, that all of us have a daddy, I said. We all have a daddy in heaven. God is our daddy, I said. So I said, all of you have a daddy. Well, Sophia's mom confessed to me later on. She says, Father, you know, I always used to tell my daughter, because naturally children want to know who their father is. And she says, I couldn't tell my daughter, Sophia, who her daddy was because I don't know. We all have a past. She didn't know who Sophia's dad was, so she would tell her daughter when Sophia would ask, well, who's my daddy? She'd say, don't ask that because it's unimportant. I am your mommy and daddy. I am both your mommy and daddy. Well, that day Sophia went home after that catechism lesson and she said, looking right at her mom, You are not my daddy anymore! <laughs> Father Adam told us that God is our daddy and so I have a daddy. She said, God is my daddy. It's no wonder that Jesus says, unless you become like a little child, you will not have the kingdom of heaven within you. Unless we go back and are born again into that innocence of a child where you know that you do have a daddy who's always with you, who's always looking out for you. You will not have peace, joy, the tranquility that comes from knowing that you are always held in the palm of God's hand. That no matter what, everything is going to be okay because God's got you in His hands. We sang today, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. Even though I walk through the dark valley, He walks with me. I am not alone. God is with you always. There is no time in your life that you are ever by yourself. And yet, we are kept from experiencing the peace which is beyond all understanding because we limit ourselves. We limit ourselves with our thinking, we become our own worst enemies. Jesus says today, putting his arms around a child, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. In other words, Jesus says, you want me? And I am what? Jesus is peace. Jesus is love because Jesus is God. So you want to you wanna have peace? You want love? Receive the child that is in you. 
lift the child that is in you. In that same town of Crescent City, there would be violent storms. You know, that's where the tsunami took place in uh, 2011, when, and, and it's a coastal town where there's like 100 inches of rain every year. And so there's these violent storms that happen, and they rock the house. There was over three months once when I lived there that there was no sun, pure rain, every single day. Can you imagine these horrible storms? And so one day I'm visiting this family. They were kind enough to invite me for dinner. They were kind enough to invite me for dinner. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm visiting them, and there's one of these storms that is happening, and everybody is scared because the lights are out, the electricity would go out, the house would shake from the wind, and everybody was scared except the little, maybe six year old boy. He was playing as if nothing. And I look at him and I'm thinking, why is he, you know, everybody's scared. Naturally, I think that he would be scared. But he isn't. He's playing as if nothing. And so I ask him, I said, well, aren't you scared of the storm? And he says, no. And I said, well, why aren't you scared? And he looks at me and he says, because my daddy is home. I'm not scared because my daddy is home. How can I be scared if my daddy is home? Hmm? From the Bible says, from the mouth of children, the truth shall flow. Hmm? Are, you take, are you taking in that child that Jesus wants you to be? Hmm? in your own life? What do we say before we receive Holy Communion? Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but come under my roof. Huh? We are inviting Jesus under our roof, into our house. Where is your house? Inside of you. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If my dad is home, so is he, uh, so the question for this evening that I want to pose to all of you is: Is your daddy home? Okay, <laughs> that is my southern accent for you all. Okay, <laughs> you didn't know that I was from the south. I am. I'm from the south, the south of Poland. <laughs> <laughs> is your daddy home? Because if my daddy is home, I'm going to be okay. And for if God is with me and for me, who can be against me? Everything is going to be okay. So whatever it is that you are facing in your life, whatever trial or tribulation, you know, you may have just lost a loved one, you know, you may have a cancer diagnosis, I know people's... You know, stories and lives, whatever it is that you're facing, you know, marital problems, depression, personal issues, employment issues, whatever it is, if my daddy is home with me, I will be okay. Mm -hmm. The problem is, as the second reading today from the book of James says, we live out of our passion. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions? You covet, but you do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and you wage war. It's all on the inside of us. Before anybody is killed with a gun, they are killed with a thought. You do not possess because you do not ask, and you do you ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Jesus says it very, very plainly. All of you have prayer intentions here this evening. 
that you're praying for. What did he say? Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find. Every single prayer is answered by God. The problem is, what are you praying for? Hmm? Jesus says, you know, are you praying for a better house, a better husband, a better wife, a better family? You know, a, you know what, are, what are you, uh, more stuff? That's your issue. Hmm? Because Jesus says, there's only one thing that you should be asking for. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be added unto you. Hmm? In other words, you know, if I've got my daddy home, which is the kingdom of God, everything else is fine. Hmm? If I've got God, what more do I need? Hmm? I will be just fine. So pray today, Lord, just give me Jesus. Amen. You know? Just give me more God, more faith, and, and then I, I'll, I'll be just fine. We will all be fine, because my daddy's home. I've got a daddy. Thank you. That's a good closing. Let's take in the experience this evening of being together. Let's thank the Lord for gathering us here this evening. We will receive Him under our roof as we have just received Him from the Word of God, from the sacrament of reconciliation as we receive absolution. And so, whatever it is that your heart is feeling right now, whatever heaviness through a burden or whatever. Just give it all to the Lord. And He will take care of everything. You are not alone. As we stand and we profess our faith that fills us with such great hope this evening. Let's pray together. Here as we sit.